Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson and this is part 7 of my Pathfinding in Unity tutorial series. In part 6 of this series, I looked at how we can add off-mesh links by hand rather than using the dynamic generation tool as part of the navigation mesh baking. This is actually quite useful if in some instances we want to be very specific about whether or not you can actually navigate from one particular navigation mesh area to another, but also whether or not we want that relationship to be unidirectional or bidirectional. In this case, I'm actually going to be looking at something entirely different. How can we then start customising the particular properties of a given area on a navigation mesh such that it is deemed more expensive or perhaps the, the worse or slower way to navigate in a particular situation? To do that, I've actually created this example you can see here, which is more or less just an extension of everything I've already done. Now, what I've taken here is just the existing original floor pieces, which are just planes that I've used in previous videos, and I kind of moved them around to create this giant A shape. I realise in hindsight that A, I could have easily then made AI in games, but you know, that's just going to take forever. Not really the focus of the video. Moving on. What I'm going to do here is, um, first of all, let's have a little look at the navigation mesh. It's pretty cool. It's built it all up. This looks really nice. And if I was to let my agent go, it's going to move its way as optimally as it can and nice, as close to a straight line as it can actually get away with uh, from that starting location all the way over to the destination. Now, that's actually quite useful, but say in a video game we're in a situation where we actually want certain parts of the world to not be navigable by a certain type of agent. Uh, maybe we might actually want to say, well, you know what, some of this is lava or a swamp or water. So maybe the player is able to navigate in it and maybe in the worst case scenario, you could actually navigate through it if there was no other way to get there. However, for the time being, um, we'd rather you avoided it. Now to do this, we can actually create areas within the navigation mesh and for each area, we can dictate how expensive it is for an agent to try and go through it. To do that, what we actually do is up here in the navigation tab, there's a thing called areas. Now I haven't touched this really at all thus far in this tutorial series, but you can see that there's already some that are pre-built for us. Walkable, not walkable, and jump. Now, actually not walkable is kind of what we want. It's um, kind of useful in the context of maybe we don't want you to be able to walk through this area. So maybe if I was to actually pick a couple of them, and then go into the object and say navigation area, oh this is not walkable, I don't want you to be able to walk there, alright cool then bake this. You can see that even though we've actually considered it originally as part of this navigation mesh, when we set it to be the not walkable area, you can't walk on it. I mean if you don't believe me then let's just actually get the agent to do it. At this point because those areas aren't walkable, this agent is taking a long way around. Da, 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 da. Come on, dude, speed it up. You're, you're holding the tutorial back at this point. Hooray! Made it. Thank God. Right. So let's just quickly undo that if we go back in here. Make sure that these are walkable regions again. And then if I go back and rebake it. Cool. Right. They're now part of the nav mesh again. But maybe I want to make them slightly more expensive to kind of detract from going into them. What I can do is let's go in and actually create our own custom area. So you can see here that there's like a whole stack of custom areas that are made available to you um, already within this tab. So I'm going to say it's um, it's a swamp. All right, let's just create it's a swamp. And let's say that it has a cost of two, which means that when it's actually navigating through it, this is now twice as expensive when it's doing the calculation to figure out where to go. This is twice as expensive to go through these areas as it is to go through the rest. And to do that, make sure I'm only hi highlighting these two and then set the navigation area to swamp and rebake it. Now the cool thing is, areas each have a colour, as you can see here, and then when it actually generates, it shows you that colour to let it be more apparent to you what particular area is dealing with. Now if I was to run this, I think that they're still going to go through the swamp. Now going through the swamp, even though it's more expensive, but the route changes slightly. Alright, that's pretty cool. Now why is it that the AI decided not to go through both parts. Notice how it went from here, 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 here. If you think about the cost, one, one, two, one, 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 versus 
one one two two one one. That was actually slightly cheaper. But say we wanted to actually make it even more expensive and force it to go all the way around. Cool, let's just increase the cost of the swamp to like five. And if we just run it, actually, we don't even need to rebake at this point because it already knows what area it is. All we're doing is just changing the specifics of how much one of those regions cost. You can see now it's actively avoiding going through the swamp area because it realizes that going the long way around, even though it takes longer, is in terms of navigation cost cheaper. So this is ideal if you really don't want your character to be able to navigate through a certain area. However, the other thing that might be quite interesting is that you might not actually want, um, you might actually then need to force it in certain contexts. So what I'm going to do is let's just uh, create um, fire. Like this whole bit here is just fire and it's worth 999 at this point. It is worth so much because it is fire and it is bad. And let's just go in and make that fire and then rebake it. Now, when we try it, even though the swamp is still more expensive, it will go, all right, well, you know what? It's cheaper to go through the swamp than it is to go through the fire. And in fact, right now, I don't think there is any other way it could do that because there's simply no other cheaper alternative because the AI will try and optimize that path and doesn't want to go through the fire. So in this, even though the fire's like green or whatever, I don't know, I'm colorblind. That looks greenish to me anyway. But the cool thing about it is it allows us to dictate in a particular context, this is a location you really don't want to go because I made the cost of it so extremely high. And it really allows us to add a lot more depth and kind of configuration to our navigation areas accordingly. And that's it for this video. This is just a really simple overview of how to start using the navigation mesh areas to suit you. And you can then try and build like more complex areas and allow you to kind of move around and and build these richer and more interesting areas where your characters will actually focus on areas that are cheaper for them and then if necessary sometimes if you change the world around them or as something that I'm going to come back to in a little bit the navigation mesh changes while you're playing the game then this actually forces it to say all right okay I'm going to go through this bit even though it's more expensive. This has been part 7 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Plus, we are supported over on Patreon, so if you want to get access to our videos early, vote on topics, and get access to the original source material, head on over to our Patreon page on screen now and in the description. Thanks for watching.